What's up, friends and family? I hope you can hear us on Facebook Live. Please comment uh, if you can hear us or if you cannot hear us, uh, because we want to know. Make sure we can hear what we have to say today. Uh, if someone can give us a thumbs up, 
that our, we sound, they can hear our sound. Please let me know before we start. Uh, that's very important. Uh, we want to know, make sure the comment, let me see. Uh, I think Maron is watching. Maron, please comment if you can hear us on Facebook Live. Give us a thumbs up. Make sure they can hear us. Uh, okay, I think we got a yes. I think we got a yes from people. All right. All right, hello friends and family. I hope you are doing well during this pandemic. Uh, unfortunately, um, we are dealing with other things besides pandemic, uh, especially if you are from Tigray. Uh, we are dealing with something called civil war. So currently, Ethiopia is in a civil war between the federal government and the Tigray people. Uh, this was declared on November 4th. So it's, it's been a month since this war has been declared. So we have two evil forces that are attacking Tigray. On the one hand, we have Abiy Ahmed's forces. On the other hand, we have Isaias, the Eritrean uh, president. These two evil forces are on a mission to destroy, kill civilians, and loot. I believe that's their mission because they know that Tigray has always been prepared for any war. They know that Tigray has always the best military. They know that. Their mission is not to win the war. Their mission is to lose the war. But by losing, they're going to cause a lot of damage. They're going to destroy establishment, Tigray establishment, such as schools, hospitals, factories. And they're going to kill civilians, despite um, where they live, who they are. Just kill children, farmers. As a result of that, cause a lot of refugees. So far, it's estimated 45,000 people have fled to the neighboring country, Sudan, in fear of their lives. That is shocking. That's within a month. Imagine if this war is going to continue. It's going to cause more damage. More people will start fleeing. They're fleeing because Abiy Ahmed and his partner in crime, Isai Safwarki, are bombing innocent people. They're bombing cities, they're bombing factories, they're bombing universities. That's their intention. This is not a conventional warfare that we know, military versus military. This is war declared specifically on Tigrayan people. But don't forget, the Tigrayan leaders have made it clear. Yes, you can come trying to invade our land, but don't forget, Tigray land will be your burial. You can come, but you will never leave. You will be buried there. So that's something that all the enemies need to know. Yes, you can come to Tigray, but just know that no one will let you leave. Tigray will not be a playground for you. Tigray will be your funeral. So with that, I'd like to welcome my guest speakers today. I have Sundayo from Boston. I have Wogene joining us from Washington, DC. And we also have Solomon joining us from Boston. Welcome everyone. How are you guys doing? Well, great. How are you? You know, hanging are, there. Are, are we all? <laughs> How are you guys coping with the current situation? I just want to start with that. How are you guys coping? What are you guys doing to help you kind of feel alive? Maybe your your tips may help other other people. I don't. I don't think there is a. Can you hear me guys? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Sorry, that's what happened when you use your phone, you get a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't think there's any particular way you deal with this. You know, 2020 been a tough year. I mean, in general, the whole world was on, on shutdown. It was, you know, tough financially. It was tough, you know, emotionally. Um, a lot of people lost, you know, family member, my coworker lost, you know, so much. And I was in a process of uh, getting them, you know, uh, help as much as I can, because I thought, wow, you know, thank God, nobody from my family passed away. You know, no, nobody from my community passed away, even though they were sick, but they're here. But before we even breathe, 
on that this comes back and suddenly you lose everything you, you, you know, you have everything, you know, and not just, you know, the people in Tigray, not just um, the family worrying or not knowing where they are or if they ate or if they drink. If you have an older mother like me, you're wondering if she even made it, you know, to, to the village or if she even could walk to the village, if she could get her medicine. You know, uh, my mom uses a, a migraine medicine. Thank God it's not like, you know, other people have helped and, you know, diabetics, something worse than my mom, actually. I am lucky enough my mom doesn't have those need immediately except migraines, you know what I mean? And I get, you know, you worry because if God gives you to have an older parent, you know, and they're 50 and they're 60 and they're 70 and they're 80, you, you know, you ask for God, oh, thank you for, you know, to keeping them alive this long. But right now I felt like I wish she, she died when life was okay. Yeah. I know it's tough. It's tough. It's, uh, it's absolutely not easy. Um, uh, the first three weeks were extremely tough on me. Um, and when I say tough, uh, what's crazy is that Sindayo and and me there is a difference there was at the beginning of it actually Sindai's family were at the beginning of this whole war and um you still have hope you know they're not going to encroach all the way to Makale because the majority of the people for me I was thinking that they're in Makale but I I didn't know what to hold on to uh when this whole thing started and knowing where it was going the hardest part it was it wasn't really about the military aspect it wasn't about you know you know fighting back and forth but there was so many dynamics that was added onto it that you can't really have uh, you, you can't really have a sense of where it's going to end what is going to happen and mm -hmm. it was it was painful um for many of us also is some of us are not like purely, you know, from a certain area, like we are, you know, we have background from everywhere. Um, that made it also, you know, to start questioning yourself, like identity, like, you know, who am I? Who, uh, who is fighting who, you know, with who? How do you explain to this to people? Um, it was, it was, it, it, it took about three weeks. Um, to get to this, like to kind of basically uh, accept it to the level, to the point where, you know what, I am That's not going- That's the reality. To, That's actually yeah, yeah, real. I, I am not going to change it, no matter, you know, I will do whatever I can on my end, but I don't think I'm gonna change the outcome. And it gave me- To the point where, you know what, I am not going- That's the reality. That's actually real. I can hear my own- Oh, uh, I think it's Maron. Okay, I muted her. Sorry, I think she joined us. Okay, um, Mayon, fix. Hold on. Sorry, Mayon, please fix. Uh, you cannot turn on two devices at the same time. It's going to create some echo. So uh, make sure one of your devices off. Thank you. Sorry, we're going to continue. No problem. Um, so it was um, the first the first three weeks, which is you know literally like um, uh, on Tuesday was the fourth week that ended. So this coming to still be the fifth week over since the war started. Um, a month, 30 days, so it was about two days ago. And so um, I think in, to some extent, I coped with it, realizing that if I become a, you know, uh, a vegetable in my mind, I, I knew I'm not gonna be able to help anyone if, and in any way uh, if I become useless, if I become paralyzed in that, in the, in, from what's going on. So I started to just accept it, you know, this is what's going to happen. I don't have any power. I can't change it. But what can I do from now on? And that is what, technically speaking, is kind of driving me go forward. Um, that's good. That's good. You have a yeah. purpose. It's, it's inspiring you to do something that's very impactful. Uh, you're, you're contributing to it, even though you're not physically there. You know, 
Okay, you're, I you're can, here. I can. Yeah, physically, yeah, I can't see you. Yeah, you're yeah. here contributing. Uh, that's great. That's great. Well, I mean, personally, I mean, you know how we usually say, like, go to the gym if you're stressed. I mean, you can't really go to the gym right now because we are in a pandemic, right? Uh, I mean, the only thing I do is pretty much just read what's happening right now. And I think that in a way that's giving me like, it's, uh, as sad as it sounds, in a way it's kind of gives me like a coping mechanism because I know what, what the people are. At least like I'm, there, there's some information coming from Tigray, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Also from the West Western uh, outlet showing what's going on with the uh, people fleeing for their, you know, for their lives, but also hearing some news from, you know, from Makala at least it gives me some hope that, you know, at least our people are fighting, you know, they're fighting until the end. So that gives me hope that, you know, gives me um, the strength to continue. So I'd like to start our discussion by showing you two video clips. So let me get started and then uh, we will discuss. All right. Trumpet Abiy Ahmed praised his troops in Ethiopia's parliament on Monday for their victory in the country's northern Tigray region, even as the forces he claimed to have defeated said they were still fighting. His soldiers captured Tigray's capital, Mekele, at the weekend, prompting a declaration that a military operation in the region was completed. The defence forces never killed a single person in a single town. No soldier from any country could display a better competence. We have disciplined, heroic soldiers. Abi said they'd carried out a special surgery in Mekele and not destroyed the city, nor killed a single civilian in the region. But in a conflict where information has been difficult to verify, the rebellious Tigrayan People's Liberation Front has a different version of events. It says Mekele suffered heavy bombardment. It also says the war is far from over and claims to have shot down a plane and retaken a town. In a text message, TPLF leader Debrezian Gebru Mikel said he was close to Mikele fighting the quote invaders. All right, so that's one video. And then let me show you the second video. Tens of thousands of people have crossed this river, fleeing fighting between the Ethiopian National Army and the Tigray People's Liberation Front. They walked for days, dodging militia and bombs. This was their last obstacle on their way to Sudan and to safety. This boat has 50 people on board. Most of them carry just a few items of clothes. The militias took our belongings. When we wanted to go back home, they shot at us. Many people have had to hide and live in the bush. We were starving. Then we heard a rumor that there was a refugee camp in Sudan. Tigrayan leaders were part of the governing coalition in Ethiopia for almost 30 years. Prime Minister Abed Ahmed came to power two years ago. They recently rebelled against him, accusing him of marginalizing them and the people of Tigray. The Tigray People's Liberation Front and the Ethiopian National Army are both accused of targeting and killing hundreds of civilians and forcing many more to flee their homes. These two families left their village together and walked for nearly two weeks.
They only have a few more kilometers to go before officially becoming refugees. We hope that the government is good here and that there is peace. All I know is that we risked our lives and now we want a peaceful government. Almost 30,000 people have arrived here at the Hamdad transit camp since the conflict began. The families find an unoccupied space. They have no shelter, so they lie on the ground out in the open and rest. We found the people who returned to villages, dead in the streets. We had to bury them. We just had to bury them. Houses were burnt down. There's nothing left in those standing. The militiamen were shouting, Tigrayans must die, Tigrayans must go. So we came here to be safe. Communication networks in Tigray were cut off when the conflict began on November 4. They borrow a phone from a fellow refugee. This is the first time the family can speak to relatives outside the region. Hello, Mala. How are you? I'm fine, it's me, Tigay. Yes, I'm fine. They kill people, execute them because they're Tigrayans. So I crossed the river to Sudan. And our sister, Tsahai, do you know where she is? Unable to cook on their journey, they have not had a proper meal for several days. The World Food Programme provides rations of lentils and sorghum for them and others. I couldn't take anything with me. I just have these clothes. It's been six days since I ate anything other than the seeds I found. It's good to be here. When night falls, the refugees have no shelter or blankets to keep warm. There are too many refugees for Hamdayat village to accommodate them all. A fellow refugee offers them coffee and advises them to ask to be transferred to a permanent refugee camp where they might find all they need. Uh, I'm leaving tomorrow. Would you like to come with me to Umra Kuba or would you rather stay here? Well, I'm thinking of settling in this country. I'm here with some of my children, although others have stayed in Ethiopia. I'm happy to be safe with them. I don't think Ethiopia will ever become our country again because of all the atrocities that have taken place there. I won't. All right, I'd like to stop the video there. Um, so looking what Abi said, right? Listening to what Abi said and looking at the reality, what's happening in Tigray. Uh, what's your reaction? Oh, uh, Meron, do you want to start? I'll start. Yes, go ahead, Sundayo. What's our reaction? He said not even one person died uh, innocent. Uh, and not a lot of women and kids were outside. All of them that left there, as he said, that they, they committed, not even this one, but I listened to all what he was saying. Uh, that committed genocide on Amhara. That's what they left to, to escape from getting captured. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Did those look like, kids look like murderers? Did the, this like four, maybe like five, six or 10 years old kids look like murderers? They will pick something and kill people. But he is right though. If he believed Tigrayan was a part of Ethiopia, he wouldn't have said that. He actually saying no Ethiopian have left, meaning his own people haven't left. It's only Tigrayan that left. Because in his mind, Tigrayans are not a part of Ethiopia. If he believed they were a part of Ethiopia, they were a part of him, his responsibility, he wouldn't be bombing them. He wouldn't be sending missiles to their direction, sending genocide, to, to their homes, but he is right. Yes, there, there's no Amhara there. I didn't see anybody from Addis Ababa. I didn't see probably somebody, maybe a little bit from Gondar, 
I didn't see anyone from other nation except Tigrayan. You, you heard them, they were speaking Tigrinya. You know, they were speaking Amharic because it's official language, they have to speak it, but they were speaking Tigrinya. Th that means Tigrayan people is not a part of, of Ethiopia. That's what he's saying. If he says there's no woman, there's no kids got, you know, left their country because of the war, he's referring to us as Tigrayan, we are not a part of Ethiopia and he's not our prime minister and we are not his responsibility. That's what, to me, that's how it feel because we, you could see it. We're not, we're not uh, showing this, this uh, clip from uh, edit. It's United Nations went in. I mean, the refugee uh, organization is the one that is showing it. It's not even speaking in, in any language except English. If he's saying nobody actually there and it's only certain people that they were afraid of getting captured for the, you know, for the um, awful things that we did. Of course, we get killed, but we still get blamed as Tagaru. Um, nobody else left. So yes, he is right. I didn't see any any other ethnic group from Ethiopia, any any other uh, from the eight regions that we have has left, except one region, which is Tigrayan. So if this is not if this is not uh, ethnic um, cleansing, then what it is, to my opinion. And I'm only talking as me, as Sindayo. I'm asking Abi Ahmed or anybody that supports him, who are we? Are we, are we a part of Ethiopia or we are not? Who is actually responsible for us? I'm not asking as a TPLF. I'm not asking as any other thing, as, as Ethiopian that was born in a Tigray, that I didn't choose, I didn't ask God, said, oh, please God, I need to born from this land, from this place. We were born the way we are, and we are proud who we are. And we are the first people to be proud as Ethiopian. Oh, Ethiopian never been colonized, or Ethiopian this, or oh, Ethiopian this. But I never knew until a month ago, I wasn't a part of Ethiopia. My prime minister that's supposed to be protecting me, that took an oath to protect the whole Ethiopia, is saying that nobody actually left and not even one person that died. That means we are not Ethiopian. He's saying that nobody, from, of course, nobody from Ethiopia died. If we're not Ethiopian, then we don't count. The people that are dying is an accident, it's not counting. No, the people that flee because they were afraid they're gonna get killed. If it's not a part of Ethiopia, obviously they not. So he is right. His people are safe. The people that he's took out to, to uh, protect, the nine, the seven, the eight regions, well, seven, because he's not protecting Oromo. So the eight regions, they are safe. But if you're gonna talk about Oromo, if you're gonna talk about, about Tigray, then he's saying that we are not a part of Ethiopia. So yes, no, nobody actually left except Tigray. Thank you, Sundayo, that was uh, well said. Uh, well, again, what's your reaction seeing both um, uh, what Abby said and uh, watching the video. And of course, we see the hypocrisy there, but we need to point it out. Yeah, the Sendayo's point about how he said uh, no Ethiopians have uh, been um, exposed to uh, refugee camps or they have not fled. Um, I, until Sendayo brought it up, I didn't take it. I, I didn't really get it. Like I thought he was still saying he was just trying to cover up the way I perceived it um, was he was saying it to the international community and to those in Ethiopia, because they are also, they have a, a media blackout, technically speaking, because they're not really saying within the Ethiopian uh, media saying, oh, there are refugees in Sudan, right? There are people who are going into Google and YouTube, they can see that are um, Tigrayan fleeing Tigray region, but they're not putting it on TV every day, right? They're not saying, oh, Tigray, you know, this is happening. All the propaganda on the Ethiopian side, it's so like 
so per pervasive. He can say this in front of the parliament and he can get away with it. That's why he's saying it, you know? But when I, um, the point that she made about how maybe in his mind, in his uh, makeup, the way he's thinking about um, the, the country, um, the Tigrayan population and the Tigray people are not part of Ethiopia. If it is, it's like in his, in his um, uh, approach is they're not Ethiopian, that is, that's absolutely possible. And I think he's thinking that way. Sindayo made a, an excellent point about that fact that if he's saying no, I mean, I, when he said that, he must be coming from that angle. And instead of trying to fool the world, I, I have this already, I have, a, um, I have already admitted, uh, or, or I can I admit here, but also I have already convinced myself that there's nothing that comes out of this guy's mouth will make me believe, right? I thought he's just deceiving me at all times, okay? He's trying to deceive me. He cannot. The reason is um, when he was uh, trying to come into power to uh, almost, almost three years now, just maybe a week before he actually was selected uh, by uh, the uh, council, uh, I watched a video of him giving a fake interview that was in English. I'm not even sure how many people have, have, have seen that video. He was uh, reading from a, pro, a, a prompter um, that was word by word from Henry Kissinger's um, interview with The Atlantic about 35 years ago. And so from that point on, I have questioned every little thing, thing that he said. And I just assumed that he was just deceiving like Donald Trump does in America. But I didn't think of it as, as he does he actually believe it? Is he, does he, is he believing you know, what he says from, is, he, is it coming from his mind or is he coming from the perception of deceiving others? You see that is a, a, a distinction between the two, but with Sindayo's point about this was very interesting how, and I think that's it's possibly that's where it's coming from, that no Ethiopians fled, then Tagarus are not Ethiopian. Right? And I absolutely agree with that. All right. Uh, go ahead, Miran. Well, like you say, my brother, we're gonna, hello everybody, sorry, I came late, I was watching you. <laughs> Um, no, I, <laughs> I really like you opened my now a little bit better like what Sundaya put it I didn't look at it and it's funny that I was watching it the video today actually what both of them you showed I was watching it this morning because I, last time what he say I mean this is the people he called them breakfast literally this is like this is nothing that 40 50 thousand immigrant like fleeing country it's nothing, it's breakfast. That's what he calls them. And it's the shame that the world thinks that this is normal. You know, when somebody says like this in the parliament, they clap for him. Literally, if you watch his speech and not even one person can say, you know what, this is wrong. The word shouldn't be even used. No matter if it's one year old or one person or whatever, one human being is fleeing from his own country because of safety reason. And it's his own people that doing this too. You know, we should feel like, you know, sure. like better. Yeah, like as a human being, if that happens to us or to our family, because to may, today may not, but tomorrow it will for sure. You know, and for him to call it a breakfast and they just clap and, you know, to take it, it's like, oh, no woman, no children. But yet, this is not even Tagaro that is putting this news. This is foreign actually showing this media, this all immigrants, there's actually a child in there and there's women's in there, but yet the, the, he can't even admit it. There's actually mixed of human being that is fleeing the country, not just um, young man, you know what I mean? Cause that's what he's trying to use is 
as a terrorist, whatever, young men are the one troublemakers, because that's my understanding. Even if they are young men, they should be able to get helped because this, this is their country and they have a right. They live there, they were born there, they pay the tax as much as he does the right to this country, you know what I mean? And for him to think it's okay just because they are men or young men, and it's okay for them to be fleeing and we shouldn't feel some type of way or help. That's, that's, that's very wrong. Clearly, uh, we know that he's in denial. He's lying. He's a pathological liar. Um, I guess I want to get deeper in this, in his lies. Uh, it sounds, it's kind of reminds us of uh, what we've been facing in the US with Donald Trump, right? He would lie. He would tweet lies after lies and after lies. And what do his lies do? It confuses people. It divides people. So my question is now, the people that he was speaking to, like Maron said, they clap at what he says. <laughs> my question is, how, are these people have sold uh, pretty much their soul to him saying, you know what? Whatever he does, we are like in agreement with him, even though they know that he's wrong, even though they know that he's lying. I, I don't and think they know he's hold wrong. On, Sorry on, to interrupt hold on, you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish my point, Mayor. Are they, do they, do they know that he's wrong or are they, have they been convinced that what he believes, what he's up to, that they believe in his ideology, that whatever he says, they believe it? Or are they uh, like, like, you know, or, or do they put guns on their head, say, if you don't do what I say, then you're gonna die. I just want to, I'm trying to understand. I mean, what do you think? Okay, sorry, can I, get, can I say something? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. All right. For me, it's two things, okay? As a human being, you should, nobody's life is more important than anybody. You know, it, it, living, you can live for like a moment, you can live for a day or a year. Sooner or later, you're gonna pay for what, you know, how you live accordingly to whatever we supposed the standards, what we God tended to live. So if everybody feel like, oh, I'm gonna save myself and be, you know, the sellout or be that, you know, the devil for their own life, for their own sake, life over the family, then that's not living. You know, I don't think people can force you to do what thing because yours is the same as that. So why you think it's right for you to save your life but not to save that person's life. And then second thing, I, I think they're all mentally ill. Seriously, they're all mentally ill. <laughs> all of That's his parliament, including him, they're just mentally ill. I hope God that brings a cure for everyone that is in that department of Bilsagana. So, so the, yeah, that, that yeah. are you friends with the mayor? Yeah. Okay. So um, it's very interesting. So it, 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 I'm going to come to your question before I answer the, those questions. I want to go back to earlier um, about how uh, in those two, the first video, he mentioned about how not even a single life. Uh, a single innocent uh, life was lost or how the Ethiopian uh, uh, National Army uh, executed their uh, assignment yep. with 99 point, like with 99% precision, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what made me, what, what, what I started to think about is how coming from Sendayo's point again, if he's saying this and he actually believes it, one is no Tigrayan is innocent. Okay? So it, it's very possible. It's very difficult to say it's this way or that way. It must be coming from this because in order to get an answer to what he's saying, you know, there is so much either deception. Is it really deception? Or is it really actually a belief if it's a belief it comes down to well if the people that are being killed and thousands of people if you are shooting 
uh, heavy artery, then you are going to have unintended consequences. Let's say this was a conventional war and they, they, you know, you will attack a society or a military, you will add, they, they will, there is unintentional uh, consequences. You can say that. And that is okay. If you are a normal person with a normal human mind. But from the way he was saying, not even one single life that is considered to be innocent is not lost because they were so amazing. They're so, you know, just, I mean, they're out of this planet. They're just, um, yep. I mean, they can, su those tanks can attack you separately. <laughs> and like, and if there are people who believe this, then we're doomed. We're as, as human beings and as a society, I just as everybody, as human beings, we are doomed. So either there is, a, 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 there is a so much propaganda or censor, uh, uh, information censorship in the country and they don't know that what kind of attack is happening, meaning in Ethiopia, and all the information that is coming from the West or from the uh, outside world is actually being blocked. We, this is possible because China does it. And if that's happening, they don't know, they might think it's true. It's possible. But if he's saying not one single life is lost, then it must be that that is innocent. Then that, mean, that means every Tigray is not innocent. That's the conclusion I come Sindayo. to, right? Yeah. 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 You say? No, I'm just, uh, yes, uh, Wogan is making really um, good points. And uh, I was trying to make sense out of it. Like I said, uh, I'm one of those people who was saying, we're all the same, we're all the same, we're all the same. And I stay away from politics since God knows that's what. I, I don't know anything about politics. I try to live my life as simple as possible. And we have friends all over the place from Ethiopia. And because of that, I was one of the person actually push in. I have a second one, my cousin, but uh, push in to say, no, we can't say that. You know, I remember back, when life was good uh, before Corona, and we went to DC, and I, we were all of us, including Wagene and my son, we were talking about you know being Ethiopian, like we taught our kids to be so proud of being Ethiopian. We never taught them to, to hate, because we want the hate to end in our time, in my generation. I never taught them who's Tigrayan, who's Amhara, who's this, who's this. I always taught them to be Ethiopian. That's all. And one day we were talking and, you know, when uh, Wagene just said that sometimes it was hard for him just for the couple, of, you know, for that, for this month, because it was an identity issue because, you know, Wagene being born from different um, Ethiopian ethnic group, right? Is that okay if I say that, uh, Wagene? It, that is the reality of many, not just me. Okay, okay I just want to, to make sure. <laughs> so we were talking and my son was telling him where he was born and he was like ah, I'm not really you're not Ethiopian because you were born you know you grew up in America you were gonna meant like you know you don't have the hundred percent culture like him and my son says well how how Ethiopian do you want me to be my mom is from here do you remember my mom's from here and my dad is from here how Ethiopian do you want me to be and that's always stuck in my head for the past month and Wagene said, no, because I, I am from that tribe, from that tribe that makes me 100% Ethiopian. That's what you said. And I remember that. And I did. this, yeah, and this past uh, month, I've been thinking, I was like, wow, I never taught my son or my kids who to be. Because I believe the life we have Ethi being Ethiopian was strong enough for him to be this um, powerful Ethiopian young men. I never taught him. Now at this age, I have to tell him, oh, mommy, how come I can't talk to my grandma? And I'm like, well, because you know why she's to grind, so they're killing her, so you can't talk to her. And he's gonna say, wait. Like, he was so confused. He was like, who's shooting who? And I, I couldn't figure it out myself. I was like, well, the Ethiopian prime minister is actually ordering a federal government to shoot in, in Tigray. 
And he was like, why? And I was like, I don't know yet. So I still don't know yet. So the people that like me who has kids, who raise their kids, or the people that are, have kids, mixed kids, that's what's going right now, mixed kids, who were born you know, from different uh, ethnic group or from different uh, um, regions. How do we tell our kids why our prime minister is actually killing their parents or their grandparents or their fathers? Or, you know, just for the fact that you can't explain. And I keep listening to him as much as it pisses me off to watch him. I, I keep listening and nobody from that cabinet or, or, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't know much about politics, but whoever was sitting there listening to the parliament, right? It was listening. The, yes. The only question they asked was, what took you so, so long not to kill them all? That's what it says. If I'm mistaken, tell me. It, the question was, what took you so long to take action? And he came uh, with a lot of skills, like a, a wife that got divorced and she's blaming her husband with everything. Oh, they did this, they did this, they did this. So technically, he's actually telling us when he went to Tigray and said Tigray are the engine of Ethiopia, Tigray are the gold of Ethiopia, he was actually uh, making time for his own to be prepared how to come back and kill us all. That was what he was saying. He was manipulating the Tigrayan people. He was manipulating us to believe this guy in our lifetime is actually going to come in and make this country peaceful. That's what we were hoping. I had hope. A lot of you will believe, like, you know, most people, I have a few friends of mine, the close friend of mine, they're like, oh, you're going to get, you, you know, your wish. This guy has nothing to do with the nice. You're going to see. It doesn't look like he's the right person for this. But I was, you know, hopeful because I am one of the people that sees, you know, the glass uh, full instead half full. And I was hoping our country actually could, you know, interact without anything. Of course, it's going to be uh, blaming the TPLF. I know that. Everybody's blaming the TPLF, TPLF and doing the TPLF. But what I don't understand is when you're bombing a, a TPLF, you're not bombing it, it, it's grind. I can't understand it. America is the high tech country, I believe. And when America went to war with Iraq, how many people died? I want somebody to, to Google that and tell me how many people died. Do you think American went there and said, oh my God, we're gonna go and kill all the Iraqi people? No, of course not. They were the goal with Saddam Hussein. Exactly. Yeah. They went to cut Saddam Hussein, but they knew some, some sacrifice is gonna happen. And, they, uh, and then they said, well, in a couple of, if I'm not mistaken, in a couple of weeks, they took over the country. Yes. And they were about to put a flag, American flag in, in, in there, and they realized they can't do it. Then, you know, they went after Saddam Hussein, and then, of course, they got him. But the country is still, until today, the country is still messed up. He stabilized. You were, it stabilized, yes. It's still destabilized. Yeah. Yes. So today, when you're saying you're going to go on a war, full-blown full war, you could start it, but you can't end it. A war is not a remote control when you start a movie and then you said, oh, whoa, this movie doesn't look good to me. Let me pause it. It doesn't pause because you hurt people already. You killed people. You already create the, the, the uh, you broke the bridge. That's how I feel. Like you broke the bridge that you had with people. When once people come killing people, the blood that was forgotten, the, the hate that you had before that was forgotten between him and Gusto is rushing coming back to people like me who, who was a refugee because of Mengustu Haile Mariam. The, the thing that I forgot, Amhara people weren't against us. Any Ethiopian people weren't against us. It was the government. It took, it took me 40 years to forget. And then with the second, it's back. Because hate like that always comes back. It did, this didn't happen a hundred years later. We didn't die yet. We're still alive. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, it does definitely bring old memories, uh, like you said, Sandayo. You know, it's frustrating to me that how people are radio silent right now, right? like radio silence, when we know that Ethiopia is in a civil war and no one, like what Sunday was saying, 
people who are, you know, claim they're proud Ethiopians. You know, I thought being being Ethiopian is what is supposed to like helping each other, right? Um, you know, being proud of where you come from, and then like having that pride. Ethiopia is a country with different ethnicities, more than eighty ethnic groups, and Ethiopia makes the what makes Ethiopia is the diversity. But at this point, that's not the case. At this point, it's to me that Abiy declared war on Tigrayans. And we have come to learn that this is not a conventional warfare. So I'm going to ask you, would you agree this is a genocide declared on Tigray people? Yes, it is. Elaborate. Um, okay. If there was, let's say he's trying to catch the TPLF leaders, right? For whatever reason that he's looking for them. He knew where to find them. He didn't need he didn't need a weapon. He didn't need a drone. He didn't need um, bombs to, to do it. That's my, my opinion. One. And another one, you if you are fighting a, a region, let's say a region you're fighting, you're not sending only federal government. Okay, let's say you're sending federal government because you are looking for certain people. And okay, I'm okay with that. Federal government meaning is. These people are well trained. Give me one second. Uh, let me get back. Let me, yeah. I can come in until uh, she comes back. Yeah. Um, yeah they were getting. So, thank you. Is it a genocide? Yes. Is, 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 it, is the question is is it genocide? Uh, in my view, to grind people specifically. In my view, yeah, it 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 really is. Um, it really is dependent, um, meaning like uh, it's not the genocide of Rwanda. It's a, if the definition of genocide is, of course, the extermination of ethnic, ethnic group, right? Yes, the, ethnic deliberate, group. the deliberate of killing a, an the ethnic group. The from, killing right. of a specific group. Yeah. Right. So the, it's, for me, um, until now, I do believe it's genocide. Because uh, uh, I don't know whether, whether that was the, in, the intention and the purpose of the federal government and Itayas uh, Ahorki, but the consequences, the end result is at least a genocide. Because based on what we are hearing, the reports that are coming out of uh, the refugee groups uh, in Hamdai and Gadarif area, uh, it's genocide because they were attacked specifically based on their ethnicity by those who are malicious Amharas. as well as uh, uh, yeah, Amhara, specific Amhara groups because they are they bordered that area. Um, and it, it seems the accusations primarily um, are coming from that region, from that section. Um, so what's happening is that if, if Amhara militias and Amhara uh, or, uh, you know, um, uh, military, uh, regional Amhara Li, Amhara Li Hail, the same way that Tigray and Hail, Li Hail, yes. Right. Li Hail, so, yeah. No, 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 I was trying to use the English word for those. And then also the U.S., the Ethiopian federal uh, military, right? The national military. So there are three of them coming in and then they are, they all are in collaboration in attacking the specific group, especially on the Western side of Ethiopia. So far, most of this thing that we know is from that region, right? So you can't explain it in any other way besides genocide. As of right now, I believe it is genocide. Is that, the, is that actually the purpose of the federal government and the Isaias Air Trust, Isaias Aforki? That's another question. It, but it, what actually ended up happening on the ground is a proof. It is genocide. Nothing else. In my let, opinion. Me, let me just add uh, before anyone says something. Um, yeah, so it, this is what we're seeing right now. The war that we're seeing right now in Tigray is 100% uh, genocide declared on the Tigrayan people because even Dr. Dobrosian said, said it in an interview uh, with the Rotors, he said that. This is not the war that we were expecting. 
you know um this is a war that's turning into ethnic cleansing and like what Guinness said they are going after only Tigrayans. They're not going after other ethnic groups. They're going specifically after ethnic, after like, you know, after like, you know, Tigrayans who are like, who, who are born there, like raised there specifically from that area. They're not going even for, I mean, if, let, let's just, for example, like let's just step out from that region from Tigray. Even for the people who are Tigrayans in the capital have been arrested. We don't even know what was happening with those people, to be honest. We don't know. We don't have any information. No one is telling us. Uh, you mean they, the, they, ethnic, the ethnic profiling uh, throughout yeah, the Ethiopia? Profiling the capital city in Addis Ababa. Uh, forget of those who are like stuck at the airport, like those who are U.S. citizens. And then, you know, they're mm -hmm. Tigrayans and they have Tigrayans' name or the Tigrayans uh, they were, who are stuck at the airport. We don't even know. Uh, forget those people, right, who are at the airport. What about the people who live in Addis and they're Tigrayans? Uh, imagine what's happening to them. So I want to go back to the Tigray region, right? A lot of a lot of them were targeted based on their ethnicity. So this is 100% uh, genocide on Tigray people. I believe it's more than that. It's more than that. It's the Leila been thinking about the the point, like the the reason why Abi has uh, an alliance who like, you know, Isa Asaforki, who is like working with him to completely destroy Tigray. So the reason why they're together is not only to just kill all Tigrayans, I believe they're together to pretty much destabilize Tigray to the point that Tigray cannot rise up again. But of course we know that that's not going to happen because we know that Tigray has a powerful military. They're not gonna let them happen. That, that's not going to happen, even if how much they try. And they, we know what kind of tactic they're using. They're using this human wave. They have so many soldiers and they're getting killed. They keep sending many soldiers, they're getting killed. They, they keep sending many soldiers, they're getting killed. I'm gonna stop here. Anyways, you can jump in Sundaya, sorry. To me, what I, I, I believe it's genocide is because how we started. Okay, we had, we had a war. The, the, the first time I heard a gunshot, was in November 3rd at 4.30 p.m. I was talking to my family in one of the Humora region, I mean Humora um, town, and I hear gunshots. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? Because living in America being, you know, me, <laughs> I thought it was 4th of July. I was like, oh, you have like a, a celebration going on. And he said, what celebration? There's a war. I think there is something going on. So the phone disconnected. And that was the last time I actually heard from my family. So imagine, not just the news told me that there was a war, it's that I heard it with my own ears. And what are you gonna think? Oh my God, my whole family is finished. That's what you're gonna think because the phone got disconnected. So on November 3rd at 4.30 PM here, which is probably is morning over there or at middle of the night, how did the, Amhara militia, how did the Amhara Fano and the federal government made it at the same time? That's my question to Abi Ahmed. If he's, if, or to anyone that supports Abi Ahmed that could answer me, I would be very happy to hear them because if there was a war that was not planned, which is he said, we attacked their, uh, the, 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 the TPLF attacked their federal government that was there and that's why he went to war. That's what I heard. Right? Uh, I believe all of you heard it. And if that's the case, why was everything precisely planned? Because as soon the federal government went in, followed by the Amhara uh, militia, followed by Amhara Fano. Fano is this gangster that has no mercy to anyone. I, and I don't think Fano actually re represents Amhara because I don't want to say he represents Amhara, they represent Amhara. But Fanno is someone that has a weapon or don't have a weapon. They have knives, they have um, machetes, they have um, uh, things like hammers, whatever that you have a household items that you work with, when would that end this genocide in my cadre? If the war was between TPLF and federal government, then the federal government only should be allowed to get in because this federal government is educated, well-trained, 
will not kill people. Like he said, they are very good at their jobs. No Ethiopian died. So if they are good, why didn't he send only them? Why did he send the militia of Amhara militia at first? I'm talking about in the beginning, not now. Now we have other country involved because he lost the war. But at the beginning for the first day, all the way to the week at least, he was using federal government first to clean the, the TPLF or the Tigrayan militia or whatever it is, and then go in with their own uh, militia and then let the uh, Fano go in to destroy and to rob the country, the, the place. Because they went there, is they want to take their own property. They believe that that land belongs to them. And he told them, go ahead and take what you want. You cannot send an licensed person does not know how to handle a weapon. It's not trained. You don't tell them stop and they stop. You send them to take what they want. That means you already sign this people's genocide on your hand because you decided to say Amhara militia and Amhara Fano could go into Homora and do whatever they want to return Homora back from them. If that's the case, that's genocide. To me, that's a genocide. Knowing that there are Tigrayan who are living in there, 99%, 99%, at least I'm gonna say 10 because I, I don't know much. So I'm not, but 90, 99% are Tagaru. Maybe 1% might be there Amhara. I don't know, maybe. But when you're sending that, you're sending them to be genocide and murdered in their home in the middle of the night. So yes, it is genocide. It was to make sure Tigray never get up again. Tigray's mother will cry until the day they die, if they survive. So to me, nothing more than genocide, this one. This is ethnic uh, cleansing, if that's the right English word. I wish I could speak more English like you guys that understand the term of everything. But to me, it is genocide. It was given, they were given license to kill, to take whatever they want by any means necessary, that's genocide. Because he didn't give the people where they a warning to say, if he had said, you know why this land doesn't belong to you, you need to leave this area. And he gave them that warning like, like, like Damhara did four years ago, three years ago, two years ago. They kicked them from their own region. These Tigrayan people tell them, go get out of my, uh, my region. They left. They went to Maqala, they tried to, to go to, most of them tried to leave, even they left what they want. They did that, but the one in Tigray never got a warning to tell them, we are coming, this is not your land, you have to leave. If they had told them they were coming, they would be ready for them. But they knew Tigray will fight until the day they die, they surprised them. And they let them go with, with the government, on top of it, militia, on top of it, a, I'm gonna call them a gangster a gangster, licensed gangster with the government that were given to go and kill, to grind and take their properties. So yes, I will believe this is a genocide to my opinion. Thank you, Sandayo. Omeron, do you wanna go? Did you see mm. me? Yes. Oh, is this uh, the question was, was this, sorry, can you repeat it so that way people didn't hear it? Can... Oh, yes. Um, would you I say actually... that Abi Ahmed has declared uh, genocide on Tigrayan people? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Declared. Yes. Because, I mean, the evidence is right there, you know, in front of our eyes. Um, even the things he's doing, like even, you know, now he's saying, He's in Mekale. The stuff that he's doing, I mean, I heard it yesterday in Aider. That's the one of the main big hospital that we have in Mekale, which, which for Tigray also, that's the one big one we have. And now they're stealing what the laboratory stuff. I mean, yeah. it's, it's hard. It's hard what he's doing, all of it. The stealing from medical books, access, uh, no bank. Now they're damaging the water resource. I mean, literally, he all his wish is to wipe us out, which is 
the, he's thinking or dreaming the impossible, you know? Uh, him, him and his eyes are forty. Um, I want to go back to, I want to make sure uh, some things are, some things uh, that are uh, like, not something, sometimes we say things that, um, because we've been so propagated to actually, we're coming to the point, actually, we also are believing and saying it that the same way. Uh, when Sindai was speaking about how now that he's losing the war, um, you know, Eritrea is, uh, is also there, but the reality is not. This was from the beginning. So I want to make sure that whoever is listening to this, that they, that they, that, so that they know the Eritrean involvement is deep. And it's not just a, you know, a two weeks ago, or we have 16 uh, divisions of military right now in Tigray, in Tigray from Eritrea. No, 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 no. The attack or the, um, the collaboration started possibly even six years before Abiy Ahmed took power. And eventually it, this will come to the world, but it was, uh, it was, a, it was a work in, uh, in the making. In the making, it was a process. Premeditated. And, yeah, and I wanna stress the statement that she made about how, uh, and when a lot of people have questions about who started the war, okay? That is a very important thing to distinguish here and a lot of lack of knowledge and a lot of propaganda has led to the point where people are even, you know, the Tagaru, are, some Tagaru are believing, I uh, have talked to a few who think that um, the guy started the war. Now the reality is no, they did, but it was a preemptive action. It was a necessary action. It's not reaction, it's an action knowing what it's gonna produce, okay? It's about pure intelligence. There was an intelligence coming that they, um, Abiy Ahmed and Isaiah Safurki, especially, mostly from Abiy Ahmed, there was a preparation to attack Tigray. So the Tigrayan uh, base attack meaning so they call them Semen Is, which is uh, the uh, uh, Northern Division in Ethiopia, the military that was, far, that was there to defend the country, were attacked by TPLF or the regional government of Ethiopia. T TPLF is not a rebel group. It was a rebel group in is about 30 plus years ago. Since 30 years ago, since 1991, they have been actual a party in the Ethiopian government system. Now, of course, in the international environment, the way they've been presented is as a rebel group because the international community is recognizing the Ethiopian central government and ignoring the regional government. Therefore, they have um, labeled them as a, as a um, rebels, okay? When they attacked this base, because they knew they were coming to attack them. And the evidence is, okay? The evidence is, as soon as they did, as Sindayo said, as soon as they did on the night of the third, um, they started attacking the same day at the borders with all, you can't, you can't be that prepared, okay? In one day, impossible. As a, a, a national military, you are spread out because actually technically speaking, there is the, the Semin is, which was in Tigray, uh, when they attacked it, there was different things happened. Some were, uh, they gave their, you know, they surrendered easily. Some actually went to Sudan. Uh, and some actually escaped to Ethiopia. So they, the same day the Ethiopian military was able to attack. You cannot attack Ethiopia, Tigray from that border if it was, and it was if it wasn't premeditated and pre-planned. And that intelligence is what led to the, the Tigrayan uh, regional government attack of the Semen Ethiopian military base. Integrate, and then the war was started. But Abi Ahmed 
has used it as an excuse to convince everyone else, right? And mm -hmm. to galvanize and to galvanize support to go against this war now that he's completely has lost, which is for the other world, for the other side, it's almost unimaginable. It's going to be a miracle for the guy to win it. Okay, so I want to make sure that one is yes, uh, the, there was an attack on the seven S, but it was a preemptive attack to save themselves. They did not want to be attacked for also from inside. The TPLF knew, I mean, not the TPLF, the Tigray regional government, because TPLF was a party that was elected to run the, the state. It was a government. It, and then, it, it was not, it still is a government. Sorry, I am mis misspeaking. It is still a government forced to a corner as of right now, right? So I want to make, I want to make sure that I want to make sure. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I think you, you make it, you make it, you make it, you make a great point. The fact that how uh, uh, the propaganda of the Abbey administration is trying to isolate Tigrayan as a rebel group. I mean, that was like a long time ago. Tigray is a region with, you know, officials, you know, it's a, it's a democracy there. And in fact, we exercise our democracy. We elected a president and that's why we got rebuked. We got rebuked for exercising democracy. On the other hand, Abiy administration decided to delay well, the election without any specification. So what does that tell you? He wants to be a king. He wants to rule. So don't tell me when or how. You listen to me to what I say. The Tigrayan said, sorry, that's not how democracy works. We have to, that's not, that's not, you know, that's against our constitution. We have to do the election. So I just want to add that to what you were saying, Wagene. Absolutely. Um, there was a, I'm sorry, you had another question? Uh, so we were discussing about, you know, pretty much uh, whether this uh, dec declaration, you know, this war declaration on Tigrayans, whether it was genocide, and we have proved that it is, it is genocide. But I, I, let's let's actually um, a little, go a little bit further. Um, I have been very shocked uh, to see people celebrate when Abby made um, a false claim. Uh, that he has seized Tigray and it's under the control of the federal government, which was absolutely false. Um, not only that, uh, it amazes me the audacity that they have to lie. And that's why I'm saying that they're using Trump's tactic. They're using Trump's tactic to lie, <laughs> lie, lie after lie, lie after lie. And they said, the, oh yes, we are in control of Tigray, Makala, the capital. But also the people in Tigray are cooperating with us. They're so happy. They welcomed us. Oh, really? So what, what, what was the barricade uh, on, the, on the road? Uh, the, the rocks? Oh, was that, a, no. <laughs> was that a welcoming sign? <laughs> Not even that. Not even that. If, <laughs> if that was the reason that Tigray, I would be very happy, to be honest. I'll be very happy if the Tigray people actually were celebrating that the way that this they were celebrating like uh, the isaac uh uh generous gen what do you call it the isaac uh, reporter guy were celebrating in some basement with the black black labor whiskey um or like the people that actually celebrating and wonder with their uh flag if that's the tigrayan people were like that i'd be very happy to be honest i'd be very happy that mean tigrayan believe the government that they, you know, was there was abusing them. They didn't want to be with them. However, they were claiming a successful of occupying. I'm going to say occupying because they're not colonizing it. Since we are outside country, we're not Ethiopian right now. The way that he's talking, in my opinion, since they occupied Makale, the only people who celebrated was the Amhara region. I didn't see Oromo celebrating. I didn't see other other seven seven uh, regions celebrating. I only saw one region, which is Amhara, who was celebrating with Abi Ahmed because 
uh, the Addis Ababa is, is a capital for everybody. So you can't call it a region, right? It's for everyone. So, but the region of Amhara was celebrating. They were so happy. And actually, if I don't make a mistake, two people died because they were shooting gun into the air. They actually accidentally killed their own person because they were celebrating. And as I feel bad for that mother. I still do. Because she doesn't even know that the, the kid that died in Tigray because of a war, the one that she had in her hand, thinking to keep him safe, actually got shot with her own people. That's how bad it was. So you're showing those people of happiness how being captured, however, you don't show anything from Tigray. And I was, for a second, I was like, wait, you know, I haven't gone to Ethiopia for a while. And I was like, wait, did Magal actually move to, to Gwender? Because when you are celebrating, yes, we have, and the Tigrayan pe people are very happy, they're cooperating. And I was like, wow, I, I guess Magala moved to another country. I didn't, I'm into another city that I didn't know about. So when you're celebrating about the failing of TPLF, that's what they said. And I have friends that actually trying to correct me. They weren't celebrating because of Tigrayan dying or Tigrayan capturing. They were celebrating because TPLF that hurt them so much, only for Amhara group that hurt them so much for 27 years, who actually gave them road, make them build their city clean. Our people died, okay? To the war for 27 years, my brother and sisters died. My mom buried se uh, at least seven people. If, 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 if it's not for her grandkids, her kids, her uh, uncles, her cousins, she, she buried these people in a war to make sure to grind, get the freedom they deserve. But what do they do? They clean uh, 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 Amhara region. They clean Oromo region. They build uh, Addis Ababa like a new New York City. We know what the, uh, the Addis Ababa used to be 27 years ago with Mengistu Haile Mariam, okay? We know the people that are here celebrating today, they are uh, half leftover riffraff from Mingus to Haile Mariam. And I'm gonna call them riffraff because they're not good enough to be even dirty because they still don't fight. They were hiding under uh, Wayane, under TPLF for 27 years until they get the opportunity for, for them to come and to take over. So they're not even gonna call dirty because they are riffraff from dirty. They were celebrating because they knew Dergi wanted to end all to grind and we fight the fight. My people fought, all of us to grind people fought to get to where we are. And we had peaceful 27 years. Yes, maybe there was killing. Yes, maybe they weren't hundred uh, percent the best government, but they didn't get bumped. There was no other country coming, hitting them. There was no uh, bumping in their own country. Or okay. ethnic in their own, yeah, or ethnic cleansing. And I will say, in my opinion, I'm not even going to say it to anyone, but in my opinion, the only people could blame us as Tagaru because for TPLF, I will give permission for Oromo people. Oromo people were dying for some reason for a couple of years now, for, since I even knew about it. They were uh, you know, out there uh, protesting. They were saying, this is TPLF, this is TPLF. Okay, I get that. What did Amhara actually, what did Tigrayan do to Amhara? Which in what city did he go and bump them or bring an outside country uh, military and uh, send them or send a rocket to their cities to kill their kids or bring a drone from other country from a rich country to see specifically where the people are to kill them since he said he has a drone. I'm not, I'm not even making it up. He did say he has a specific technology named drone. I don't know what it is. I believe the way I Googled it, that that uh, product is not even supposed to be in Africa. It's not even supposed to be in Africa because it's not supposed to be sold to African countries because they know we are not stabilized enough to have that much power to have that. That's how powerful this uh, drone thing is. Well, plane, whatever that is. He used that. He said specifically use, he could even tell if there was a, a kid's or women's, and sometimes they return with whatever they have because they don't want to kill. That's what he said. That's coming from his own mouth. I'm, I'm quoting what he said. If they had done that, so why was a rocket 
been thrown? What was there a plane uh, coming in with a rocket in Abi Addi that ended? And I think it was three days ago in uh, Abi Addi, a little bit, it's a small town. It's not even, you can't even call it a city. There was only, there was only one, one hotel, one building hotel in there. And he actually bombed that hotel. For what? Is there a TPLF there? Do you think a TPLF is staying in a hotel? He, they are so luxurily, they decided to stay in a hotel, moved from uh, Magali and they're like, okay, you know what? We're not in a war, so let me go stay in a hotel. So if this is not ethnic cleansing, and then what it is, I would like someone to tell me, what does it mean to say ethnic cleansing? Ethnic cleansing, what does that mean? It doesn't it mean, yan deserve so much fat and let better than let me ballo. Nine had a seven Luhona Zer, it is a low man of Luhon in you, ethnic cleansing the bad. If I'm not, if I'm not, you know, if I'm, if I'm mistaken, like I said, yeah. I didn't study, I didn't study, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you are right. Politics. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you, pol you don't have to prove that. You, you are right. Yeah. Ethnic yeah. cleansing. Uh, yeah. You're targeting a specific ethnic group. Okay. You're killing so them, destroying them. That's the yeah, difference. I'm not, I'm not representing anyone. I'm just asking questions. If that's what our prime minister of Ethiopia is saying, then what's the reason of going to small towns in every city, small towns in every city is bombing in every city. This is, it's not just ethnic cleansing. It's not just killing the people because he knows, like you said earlier, to grind are well prepared to fight. And I, like I said yesterday, in the where we were protesting, I said the land of Tigray, the land of Tigray, including the tree of Tigray, grew up at the blood of Woyane, grew up of the blood of these innocent people fought for their freedom. For me to speak Tigrinya clearly, for anyone to speak their own Atelic language, Oromo to speak their own language, Abashangul to speak their own language, which is Gumas, any ethnic group, like you said, to speak their own dialogues they were given my people died for that so including the tree has blood of they that and it will time. yes and it will pay and they will fight them until the last tree standing not only the last grawa is standing including the tree itself will fight them but that's how prepared we are but the problem is we weren't prepared for another country to come in and fight us we are fighting, like I said, five, uh, eight regions and two countries. If Somalia is there, if it's true Somalia is there, and then it's three countries. Oh, three countries. I, I would like to say about, um, I think uh, there is also UAE. There is also, so Somalia is, you know, technically speaking, there with 15,000 soldiers. Um, so we have... Uh, we have the Ethiopian Federal Forces, the Amara Regional Forces. There is the militias of Amara militia. There is Eritrean uh, full military mighty. Higdef. Uh, uh, yep. I, um, I know we have to be careful like associating the Eritreans with the military uh, aspect because uh, they're not really in support of this. Um, uh, and then you have the UAE technological support. And those are the, uh, the, the, uh, the unexpected dynamic to this war, the things that are changing, how mm -hmm. this is evolving over time, you know? Uh, the, the strength and the power and the tenacity of the Tigrayan people and the Tigrayan uh, party and Tigrayan regional government is un unquestionable. And the land, as she said, the land and, and the trees and the mount and the rock, that is not in discussion, but it is uh, what's been coming is uh, a flood of human body and uh, sky, sky based technology that they are trying to withstand and trying to preserve at least some life and some infrastructure. And it's not, it has not been easy. So there are six forces that are playing roles in this fight against one regional government. 
Um, this if, is if, like uh, we're gonna if I, if I may interrupt you. This is yeah, you know what this ahead. reminds me of. This reminds me of the the uh, Bible story, uh, Gali Goliath versus David. Yes. And when the Philistines were facing the Israelites, and they were shocked at the number of the army of the Philistine, and the, and, and then they said, "How are we going to fight?" And then here is David, young man, and he said, I will fight, see the courage that he has. And then sooner or later, you know, they destroy this huge army. So that's that's how I would like to paint it right now. Tigray is David, and the, the rest of the evil forces are Goliath. Go on, we're gonna go ahead. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, you are muted. Uh, mute yourself. Um the way it has been portrayed is, of course, uh, especially to the international community in the international world. And that is uh, partially our own fault, um, meaning uh, as Tigaru throughout the world that have, uh, could have, could have uh, involved themselves to rebuff the false narrative that has been happening throughout um, Ethiopia for the past 10, 15 years is coming to bite us now. That really is what's going on right now. It's just that the, the, what the, the media has been controlled and the narrative has been controlled for so long. Now we cannot come in overnight and trying to take over the world, trying to prove the truth or our truth, at least, if not the truth, at the minimum, our truth. If you cannot spread that fast enough. And the reason you cannot spread that fast enough is because it's been done, the, the damage and the work has been done over a long period of time. It's now it's hard to come in in a short amount of time and convince the world, oh, this is what is really happening. And, and this is what they're saying. It's not true, but this is what's happening. We don't have that microphone. We don't have that power. That has to be, has to be developed from, you know, after seeing this, after the, the consequences of this, the loss of life and loss of... Uh, property and the loss of wealth and political power and military mighty, all this is going to be a play from now on, but it wasn't there until now. So um, the number of <laughs> the, I, I'm not sure if the world understands how the, the, the fight has been happening. Um, it's uh, the way it has been done is you have the Amara militia come in first, you know, they call them, some of them are a part of Fanno. It's a young uh, people, um, you know, it's a very hardcore uh, Amara. Uh, well, like, believe... like I said, it's a gangster or mafia. A, yeah, you can call mafia it a gangster. Which, you know, to be fair, I'm sure there's those kind of uh, groups throughout around uh, the world somewhere. Yeah. Also, it could be, they could be in Tigray and, and then also in Oromia, we have some other, uh, they call them Shane uh, or, uh, or other names. So it, it happens, but some of them are actually either they're very powerful in terms of reaching out their own um, alike kind of people uh, and actually uh, executing their goals. And one of the, their, uh, one of their biggest um, drive is to get their land back. There is this, there is misconception, mis, mis uh, in, uh, informed, um, uh, land has been taken from them and therefore you have to get your land back so that kind of galvanized them to go into this and when when there is and i hope soon enough international um media access to the region the truth will come out it the won't be that long the yeah, truth the will come out it might take it a long time it might take it some time but it will come out when that comes out the way it's been done and how the people have di been dying includes those people, includes the Amara mil uh, military, includes uh, all Ethiopian military, includes Eritrean military, uh, Hegdef, yeah, Hegdef military. So it's a lot of forces coming in and the, 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 the testament to the resilience and the strength and the tenacity of the Tigrayan people and Tigrayan military is with all this force, they still standing and they don't even have one individual person that they can say we surrendered out of the 117 plus other 
600 people they might be adding every day. Okay. So that's, that, that's an assessment to their strength and in, in the, the fight that they, are, they have put up. Absolutely. Again. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, again, they're messing with the wrong people. Isai has messing with the wrong people. I mean, why do you think he waited 30 years until Abis came to power? you know, to cooperate with him too. So Isaias, on the other hand, right, he's been holding this grudge to release this resentment. He was like finding ways, like he's like a snake, you know, finding ways. You know, as long as I'm alive, I need another chance to attack the grains. And then we have this new leader who uh, comes to power on the idea of uniting the country. But then little do we know that this person actually had the same resentment what Isaias has, has. So this was like a perfect cooperation between, uh, uh, between uh, Isaias and, and Abi. It's like a perfect uh, partners for this mission. And they said, great. Oh, you have resentment? I have resentment on the Tigrayans. All right, let's go attack them. Let's go kill them. Let's go destroy them. So that's what's happening right now. And, but then one thing they don't know is that Tigray has always been prepared. The Eto and Eritrea war, even prior to that, the Derg, right? Fighting the Derg, having like little weapons, fighting with what they have and overcoming that, that has taught them a lot. And like Sundayo said, heavy price was paid to defeat those people. Heavy price was paid to defeat those people. And what's, what do you think is gonna happen after that? So Grants will do whatever it takes. One, their region is protected. And two, their people are protected. So when Abby cooperates with uh, Isaias, well, they know that. They know that from the beginning because when Abby made the peace treaty, he didn't even uh, reconcile with the Tigrayan people, the people who live near Badim. They, they, they were not reconciled with the people of Eritrea. Isaias didn't come to Tigray to say, you know, to, to connect with them, to reconcile. That didn't happen. Isaias just went to Addis. But th that's it, period. That's it. That's what, that's what happened. So that's how you know that this has been uh, brewing for, 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 a long, for a long time. But we know that Tigray will win at the end. That's no yeah. doubt about that it. We know. No question there's about no it. There's, there's no, no doubt. doubt. There's no question about it. About it. Heavy price will be paid again. Mm -hmm. But I want to go back to the point that I was uh, asking Wageni. That have Tigrayans be betrayed? Because right now it's like a, we see the betrayal from people, that people that we never expected. That when Abby told the lie to them, first of all they took it as truth. That's another discussion. Like, are these people delusional? Do they question even his authority? Do they question at what he's saying? I mean, he tells them a truth and then lie, lie and lie, but then they still believe it. They don't question it. So that, that's one. That, that's something that we can discuss at some other point, uh, some other time. But I really want to focus on the uh, the idea of that Tigrayans are by themselves right now. A lot of people are celebrating, thinking that TPLF is over. That's what they're saying. Like they're using Abby's word. It's, you know, it's game over. It's far from over. So that's why I want to go back to that. Tigrayans are right now fighting by themselves right now, whether they are in Tigray, whether they are in the, in the diaspora. I haven't got yes. anyone, I haven't got anyone, any phone calls from someone that I know from Addis Ababa who lives in the diaspora calling me, hey, Marhawi, I'm sorry, what, what, what's happening in Tigray? Let me tell you something. Uh, what I know is we've been played. The reason I'm saying we've been played is those friends that you thought was your friends, actually, they weren't your friend. The friends that you went to concerts with when there is Amhara or other ethnic group coming in, the friend that never made it to a Tigrayan concert because they said we always sing Tigrayan, that's why they never come. The friends that they take you to their own, but they never come to you. Those friends, we should have paid attention a long time ago. But we have skews. Tagaru, we are the best to make skews for other people. Or because they don't, you know, they don't learn Tigrinya, it's okay. Or because they don't want to learn the Tigrinya, it's okay. But it's okay for us to go and spend the mon our money in their own areas, but it's not okay for them to come and support us. That we should have been known already. But past that one, past that one. And right now, where the country is taken over uh, by military, it doesn't matter. You don't have to even support Tigray uh, uh, leaders. But me as Sindayo, 
you know, there was a friend that called me, one called me, but I didn't like the tone of the conversation. Yes, it did, you know, they did call to say, oh, are you okay? Is your parent, is your family okay? Did you hear something? But what that made me mad with the person that actually made contact, one, I know I have more than that, you know, but at least like you guys, like Wagene or uh, Marhawi and, or maybe even Alex or my cousin, I know there's so many different ethnic, which is Amhara. I'm not even going to say any other uh, thing, but Amhara friends that you guys have. I don't know how many of you ha that you guys actually got a phone call, but to me, the one that got the, you know, call in, in a concern, it was a defender of Abi. It's like, oh, if your government hasn't done the vote, this wouldn't happen to you. If your government gave their hand, this wouldn't happen to you. And I was like, wait, I'm already struggling trying to figure out what happened to my region, to my people. But you don't need to tell me why your, your believer leader is doing to my people. At least just be my friend. Just be my friend and listen to my pain because you don't even know how I feel. What's like for you to hear a gunshot, but then the phone goes dead and no, no communication, nothing. And the leader of our country that's supposed to took the oath to protect is saying, I am declaring a war. It's inside of an affair. I don't need an outside to come to tell me what to do. I'm just trying to bring these people to justice. And I see over media or social media going on saying, oh, stop the war, but go bring the, the, the junta. Go get the junta. Stop the war, but go, go get the junta, which is okay. But did he stop? No, he didn't. Because once you say, I am launching a war, it's like I said, it's not a television. You demand it to stop and it stops. Once you start a war, it's easy to start a war. Very easy. Forget about a war. Right now, I could just start an argument with, uh, with Wagene for no reason. Easy to start it. But how to stop it is the hard thing. And war is something that blood shared. Uh, thing. That's why it be, it, the word is war. And when we said we are not in a war, he said, no, we are not in a war. We are just trying to bring these people to justice while we're killing to grind. Go ahead. Um, so speaking of starting war and ending war, um, people that will understand uh, or will know uh, how war could be started, but it, uh, it doesn't end, or it doesn't, it doesn't end because you switch, you know, you put a switch on or off. Are those who have experienced war and have lived in a war region? And there is a difference between, and I am sure, I hope that there is someday we have people from other regions that have, that they could, you know, participate in this kind of forum. Um, the Tigray people, and if you heard in every reporting, meaning in every uh, external uh, uh, or international media reporting, they always mention the battle hardened CPLF, right? What they don't mention is the battle hardened people of Tigray, which is the reality is the people of Tigray have gone through so many wars over the past 150, no, 170 years now. Since 1860s. Um, I mean, we can go back to 1400, but you, you can, you know, consistently Eritrea and Tigray have gone through war. And I, in my the small years have experienced it. this is my third war i'm not there i happen not to be there now but i experienced two of them i was there for the 1991 civil war because it is civil war it is civil war right now it's happening um also the uh, eritrean ethiopian war 10 years within 10 years not even 10 years after seven years of that peace the peace period that we had so 
It might actually, um, to the people that are outside of Tigray, this is, this is feasible. It's acceptable. It's believable that this war could be switched off. They can believe it because they don't face war. They, don't, they haven't seen a, cut, like a leg that has been cut. They haven't seen blood gushing out. They haven't seen the actual war because you have to be in that region. Tigray happens to be that region. And so for, for him to say that, and when, he, when Abi Ahmed says this in the parliament or in any kind of setting, in the rest of Ethiopia, it's absolutely believable. It's, uh, in that, I, I bet you I have no question they believe it. Okay? But the idea- The other, the, the, the other the, discussion, yeah. yeah the other the, discussion- what, the, mm -hmm. the thing oh. is, yes, the, sure, yeah, sure, they may believe it, but how about uh, asking the question, why are you killing civilians? Well, so that they, first of all, yes, uh, that, that's, uh, you can't ask that question. It all depends on the media that is right now being the, the um, in term, like the, the, the media that has been covered, how they are covering in the media inside the country matters. I am not very well previewed to that. Okay. I mean, forget that one. Even like in the diaspora, even in the diaspora, right? Well, the diaspora, yeah, but the diaspora understand there is a 20 years of propaganda that is almost impossible to break through right now. And like, it just, there is this belief um, that TPLF had, have hurt, have hurt, um, have had hurt so many people that whatever it takes, whatever energy you have right now, I don't, I don't know how many people understand that the Ethiopian country as a country, it's open right now. Anybody can go in. If any other military wants to go and attack the country, it's open because all the military power have been lost on this war. Okay. Demolished. So, demolished because they used every energy, every military power, every, uh, and, and includes Eritrea too, um, to attack that region in the name of, to get a number of military- To be left, as they say. Yeah, which is, that, that is just a side joke. Like that's what, they, that's what they're trying to portray it's to people, but what they want is really- It's sad that they use. That's the sad that they use to the, yeah, the, to the exactly. Western world. Exactly. So, but to go back to your question about how uh, do Tigray people feel betrayed? Oh, beyond betrayed. Because, um, I, so like I was trying to um, manage the, the level of hatred that might come out of this, like in my mind, um, meaning that when it came to the way the other regions feel about Tigray versus how Tigray feels about the rest of the region. So in my own opinion, in my own humble uh, view and experience, I know, not that I know, I feel that the Tigray people don't have that kind of animosity against another region, other, other groups. Um, but that, that sentiment is higher from the other group, especially from the neighboring area, right? Now, even that, I always spoke to people that I know close to me. Um, I always told them that they need to remember that Ethiopia is 80% agricultural. It's uh, uh, meaning like they are substance of farmers in the countryside. They don't have this kind of information access to be one way or another. They're peaceful people. The hate and the, the terrible propaganda is primarily happening in the urban areas. So it feels like you're, you're hated or the group hating is, um, a lot of it is, a, a, a lot of people are hating you, but the reality is actually it's not that much. Now, due to this war- Well, we don't know that. The, we don't well, know that. I mean, I, I, you, can, you can tell, you can, you can because the number I mean, we feel, of- the we, number, feel the hate. we feel the hate here, like, like in the diaspora, even in- the diaspora, you're yeah. right, you're right. You feel the, there's more like, you can see, you can, you can almost like tangible, right? And the capital in Ethiopia, also in the diaspora, it's very, like you can tell the, the, you can tell the hate is tangible, but you're right, we don't know if in the countryside they, 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 they think like that, we don't know that, you're right. They don't have the access, so we like, they don't have the, the media access, the propaganda, they do, I mean, I'm not saying some of them don't, 
I'm just saying in general, majority of Ethiopians are just peaceful, living small life and farming. They are not into this, but it feels, you know, it feels. Now I can't say that anymore about Tigray because everybody in Tigray is being affected by this war, right? Unlike the rest of Ethiopia, the Tigray side, however, the, the betrayal is gonna, be, is gonna be real now that it's not gonna, you cannot differentiate between the countryside and the urban, you know what I mean? So the, they, are extre they have extremely been betrayed and, and they could be surprised because they didn't think it was this deep, um, especially from the elite and uh, the urban centers. But yeah, they are absolutely, absolutely dis devastated. No question. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yes, I, I, I feel the same way. You know, I, I agree with you. We are 100% Tigrayans have been um, betrayed um, by their own people, um, despite what uh, Meles did in the past, the development that he did, he brought to Tigray, uh, child mortality, agriculture development. You know, the TPL have done so much great things. Uh, yes, you may disagree, right, the way they ruled, but that's, that's just the same way. Anyway, wherever you go, I mean, even in America, right? To this day, we face racism. Racism is still exists in America, people. So what I'm trying to say, I'm not trying to justify, uh, you know, the Tigrayan leadership was perfect. I'm not saying that. But the Tigrayan leadership hasn't singled out a single ethnic group and said, okay, we're going to eliminate those people. We're going to kill those people. They didn't do that. That's not, that's not, that's not, that was not their intention. So that's why right now a lot of Tigrayans feel that, whoa, I didn't know that there was this much hate towards Tagaru, you know, Tigrayans. Many, many have come to realize um, now and, and the, the feeling of not only betrayal, but also um, unlike, as I told you, unlike how the, uh, countryside of the rest of Ethiopia is uh, more uh, away from this. You know what I mean? Like, but Tigray has throughout the whole state has been affected right now. And I am um, extremely concerned the, the way how they're going to feel from now on. And unlike what the feeling that they had previous before today, before this war, the, the feeling that's going to be emanating from now on. Because mm -hmm. this, is, this is how it feels. Because, you know, the, the sentiment of how, like, oh, I'm no Ethiopian anymore. I don't feel Ethiopian anymore. Like, that is coming into all of us now. Well, yeah, that because... We and, make a decision yes. to the point of, yeah, to the point of, like, oh, is this my country? Is, like, is this, like... But also, to, the, to some extent, is there is some guilt, some, some fault in us, too, which said that um, when other people, other groups were, you know, crying out loud, they are saying this was happening, was some things were happening. Uh, we, we, we didn't see it as much as we should have. Those who were aware, those who uh, have the access to, those, to that kind of information. So the betrayal is beyond. I mean, the way Tagaro feel right now, how much they have been betrayed, betrayed is um, even based on my experience around me, it is uh, immeasurable. It's, it's too much. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Tigrayans have been betrayed. That's hundred percent. And uh, we will have well, a discussion. That that way. We will have, yeah, we'll have a discussion uh, for the next, in our next show, uh, discussing uh, what's the future of Tigray. Uh, we will leave that for other time. Um, so I want to touch base on the reaction from the rest of the world. Uh, I have been very frustrated. You touch up on it a little bit, uh, Wagene. Uh, you said that the way the Western media uh, views the Tigrayans, you know, they don't view it as a as the official government. They view it as a as a rebel. Uh, but not only that, it's been frustrating to me the fact that um, they see a lot of children being bombed. They see a lot of farmers being bombed. They see cities being bombed. They see university being bombed. They see that. And there was an article in the New York Times. It was, it was, it was verified that Tigray has been bombed. There's a lot of wounded people. They are running out of medical supplies. They need help. 
And yet the Western media still come out to say, oh, by the way, we don't have an independent person to verify this. Why are, why are they saying these things? I don't understand. Why, why, why can't they see what's in front of them, the people fleeing for the, in fear of their lives, right? And seeing mm-hmm. the damage, right? So why are they trying to play like, I, I don't understand like so, what the objective when they see is, that you know, things are being yeah. happening and it's real and Tigrayans, the civilians are dying. You have to understand this is real to you. And this is real to you, meaning because you, um, one is you are consuming different kind of information than the majority of Ethiopians right now. You have to understand that because in the fact that you speak Tigrinya and you're able to listen to the information from Tigrinya perspective, you, um, you are able to, um, you are able to see the other side, okay? The, the failure, like it's not a failure in, in, in a way, when it comes to the international, com- the international media and the international community, the information that they receive have to be through proper channels, meaning through uh, um, accepted channels. In other words, they can't accept a, it's a, when, when uh, uh, information is coming from Tigai TV or it is coming from, um, let's say, uh, DW, uh, TV or radio or writing, um, they cannot uh, take it at face value, or you know what I mean. And they still are questioning a little bit of the, uh, I know, the Ethiopian TV, but they is, there is more value to that because that is the accepted government to the international community. So BBC or Al Jazeera, France 24, or anyone else that is international media is trying to validate something. It has to come through their own. Uh, reporters on the ground. They cannot use uh, a third party or some other report. So they, they mention saying you cannot verify uh, one way or another, but most of the time, this is what the government is, if Ethiopia is saying. Since they already have classified the Tigran government as a rebel group, they have to be there to just say, oh, what the Ethiopian government is saying, we have not bombed. To rebuff that or to believe that, they have to see it in person. So there, it's not that they can, they're valuing uh, or accepting the response they get from the Revolution or Gita Chorada, you know, or anyone else that is in that government because they don't, they don't accept it as a government or they've been told as being a rebel group. So they don't have as the same value as, um, as the, the central government or, you know, uh, Abiy Ahmed and the Ethiopian media and the Ethiopian agencies. Even when they did this, there were uh, some reports coming out of uh, the region, especially those who use those kind of channels to report the other side. They have been put on warning and some of them have been expelled. They have lost their license from Ethiop- reporting from Ethiopia as a country, you see? So they have to even apologize. BBC apologized a few days ago for, uh, for one of the reporters reporting something that was not exactly verified through the proper channels. So we see these things happening. They, it's being presented this way because the, um, the regional government has already been uh, labeled as a rebel group. And when they are even presenting it, the narrative automatically has become of oh, the rebel group, the rebel group. And automatically set, tells you all oh, those who are saying no, like you know they are not agreeing with the central government. They are creating problems for the whole country and the, the especially the Abi the PP party. So that's where it's coming but, from. But but that, but that makes it interesting though. That that makes it then the Western media is one sided. They are siding with Abi. You know as much as they're trying to be objective, right? By painting Tigrayans as a rebel group and instead of trying to investigate what's happening, they're just like taking word from Abi's administration. Another frustration I have is this, right? They're calling uh, every person from Abiy administration, like, oh, political analyst, so, and so, and so, and so, so, and so, you know? They're calling different kind of people. Oh, he's the manager of this. He's in, in, in charge of this, that. Minister of, uh, oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, 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 this is like representative of Abiy, Abiy's administration. Yeah. 
they they are <laughs> interviewing these people. I mean, these people are just like, we don't even know who these people are. They're just like, you know, they have this title, right? And then they'll interview them, right? They don't even challenge them. And like lately, like since a lot of, you know, a, a lot of uh, comments have been like flooding on their website, like, hey, why are you not challenging, you know, why are you not challenging them? And then that slowly they start challenging those people are like, oh, how do you know that? This hasn't been verified. And then they all say, oh, your, your, your leader said we haven't killed anybody, but we see that people are dying, right? So it's like this, they start doing this like very late in the war and instead of doing it from the beginning. And then the, yeah. other, hold on, hold on. And then the other thing I have is this, if they're able to call people from Addis, right? They could do the same thing from Tigray, right? Even though the communication, there's a communication blackout, right? TMH. Tigray Media House from DC, they're able to, they have contacts. So people have satellite phones to call them how they're doing. They can make, you know, they can make this cooperation with them and say, hey, TMH, we'd like to know what's happening in Tigray. Do you mind talking to your people? Trying to find more information so to present an objective, right? An objective information instead of more to like one-sided. And that's why it's so frustrating to me is that th they're not exercising the, uh, the uh, the idea of journalism they're they're like pretty much like you know reporting what abby said and they're like it's more becoming more like like for the clicks and sort of trying to really like you know show what's really happening to see that thing that's coming up uh, uh, this is about how um uh you're saying like they were they're not challenging them of course uh, lately they started to challenge a little bit but you you know the reason they're not challenging them is this way uh, as a student, you know, the, best, the best way to explain this is like when you were a student or any student, um, those who actually ask questions are those who understand a lot. They just are missing something. If you, are, you don't understand anything, you're like you're clueless, you're more likely not to ask. You're not going to, because you're gonna, you don't know where to start and where to finish. You can ask one thing, you're not going to understand the rest. So those good students are the ones who ask questions, right? Normally. Good students ask questions because good students are paying attention and good students actually know a lot, most of it. They miss some things, they want that to be filled. With the international, um, the anchors of you know, different um, outlets, they also have a uh, lack of information, lack of understanding of the whole dynamic, the, uh, the conflict itself, right? So in order for them to ask a specific question, they have to have a deep understanding of, or a tough question, they say, is, or, or to challenge them, they have to have a better understanding of what that region is like and what is, what is the actual fight, uh, be like a deeper understanding. So that's where it's coming from. You know, mostly it's emanating from their lack of their own understanding of the region, or especially the country itself. And the other thing is, they also are, uh, playing uh, a tiptoe. They're worried. They don't want to lose their licenses because the way it's been going, they, they, are, they can lose their license and they have to be careful in how they present this. And like, they have to be walk you know, a fine line between uh, the, the central government that has so much power right now uh, in you know, kicking out journalists and putting in jail journalists, which is uh, a lot of the times that's wrong in the democratic society that they say was a democratic system. Uh, and they specifically actually are, you know, writing to them saying, oh, do not stop reporting this way. And they're specifically telling them. So you cannot blame them. Um, in terms of, um, uh, sorry, what was the other uh, question? Uh, well, the idea that they don't, the idea that they don't try to uh, hear other perspectives, you know, they're trying to hear only from the Abbey's administration or, or the refugee. And instead of like, for example, Washington DC, like oh, I said, yeah. Tigray Media House, they have great connection uh, with people back home in Tigray. And they're able to still, you know, uh, hear uh, what, like how Mekala is doing or the Tigray region, you know, in a whole, like as a whole, how they're doing. So what I'm saying is, if these true uh, journalists, you know, news outlets, if they care so much what's happening in Ethiopia, then they should be able to try whatever tools that they have trying to find out the truth. 
in a sort of like, you know, oh, let me interview this person from the Abbey administration, see what they have to say. You know, I mean, that's the, that's how I'm looking at it. I mean, that's the idea of journalism. You know, I, I've learned, I've learned journalism. Yeah. Before. You know, that's the, that's the purpose of journalism is to find out the truth. It doesn't matter, you know, who says what says is to bring both objectives together to the table. But if you're just interviewing mostly from the Abbey's administration, then that's work, that's, that's working for, to their best uh, benefit because their main goal is what? Spread propaganda to keep lie, to keep lie after lie, lie after lie, lie after lie. So if you keep, if you keep doing that from, from Western point of view, you, you are from, you know, from the West, you just interviewing them, not being able to interview, even find someone, even find someone from the West, right? Trying to kind of like, you know, counterpart to what they're saying, then they're not doing their job. They're failing as June, uh, as news outlets. It's, it's been a it's been a while since the journalists um, uh, the the value the uh, core of journalism has uh, destroyed been destroyed because if you it's been about your audience it's about who you want to listen to you and how much the how much you want their their time than presenting the truth and um, uh, fighting for a real information right. Uh, when I say that is because if you really look into in, in the U.S., um, if you can you can go certain media that you know, um, and you can like we about seventy uh, almost seventy four seventy three to seventy four million people have voted for uh, uh, Donald Trump, the current president of the United States, and you have more than forty million uh, enough between sixty to seventy percent of those people who voted for him still believe that the election was rigged while the united states government from top to bottom have come down come out and say this was the most secured election of our history not only this this you know the past 20 years or 100 years ever and they have concluded that and yet there are enough people believe that this American election was rigged. And that is because of the failure of journalism, right? It's because no more presenting the truth. It's more focused on money and audience and time that people would be watching those, their shows. And if I were really, if I was gonna think about the international media like that you have viewed um, are putting their, you know, their choice whether on the Tigrayan people, which is about 6 million, million throughout you know, the world, or uh, the 105 million Ethiopian population, because they have this perception already that a majority is against it. And they have been propagated enough to believe. So they're gonna side with the majority. You know what I mean? The majority, there is enough. The truth don't matter anymore. Who cares about the truth? You know, truth, truth don't, it's not important. What's important is I am with the majority, you know? So that is the perspective I think they're coming from. Now, where, where are they actually confirming with the uh, media like uh, TMH? Well, possibly they don't even know about it. It's uh, also the failure of the Tigray community and the you know, Tigray people who are in the different organizations in the United States. Um, they are not maybe directing them to this, right? Like if you're directing them, of the, if you want the truth, to you can go ask these, but it's still they're not gonna get a firsthand information. And if, even if they get, if they got firsthand information, who are they presenting it to? And if they're presenting it to, you know, ninety, you know, ninety-four million Ethiopians uh, versus the four six million. I'm not saying everybody's aligned the same way, but I'm just saying in general, they are more likely to choose what is more desirable by the majority instead of what's the truth you see what i mean yes. that has that has changed that the, that that these things have changed over the past especially the last 20 years i think media especially in the us even have uh, progressed so much to a completely a different stage a different level i know so that's what i that's that's my take well said, well said. All right, we're about pretty much wrapping up. Uh, I don't know if Zendaya can hear us. I don't know if she's still available. Can hear you. Uh, I could hear you. Okay, well, if you can, uh, can, I, can we see your face? We are about to... Driving. <laughs> um, 
Oh, she can see us. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you're okay. about to, well, we are about to end the show, but before that, let me just say to the mm -hmm. audience, uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much if you're watching us live um, uninterrupted. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you learned something new. I hope there was something that, you know, that you take from this conversation. And the whole idea of this uh, having Facebook live stream is that one, we is to, run, to, to raise awareness what's happening in Ethiopia because a lot of people like, you know, like I said before, not a lot of people know what really is going on. So it's, it's good to hear us. It's good to hear from people, for Americans to hear from us because we're from there. You know, we are from there. So we have the, you know, we, we're telling you the truth. This is not a propaganda. We're not spreading lies. You know, this is the truth. We're telling you the truth, what's happening. And we are raising awareness. We're saying, if, if you know now, then spread the war because we want the wars to stop. We don't want this war to continue because if the war continues, yes, Tigray is going to win. That's not a question. But after the, after the, the, the math, right? After the fact, when the war is over, there will be more damage. Tigray will need more help to, in order to grow again, you know, in terms of development. Because like I said in the beginning of the show, Abiy's forces, Isa's forces are not there to win the war. They are there to lose the war. But their mission is to destroy Tigray's establishments, universities, hospitals, factories, kill civilians, and then steal, like Dr. Debrezion said, steal school supplies, medical supplies, computers. That's what they're there for. So we need to stop these two evil forces and they need to be held accountable. I just, yeah, I just wanna say uh, when you, in terms of like, um, you know, we are here to speak the truth or, you know, like more like to speak our truth because you have to understand the truth sometimes is a matter of perspective. You know what I mean? So you yeah, like, I, I believe what is, you know, this is to be true, but not to everybody, right? Um, but so the truth is that the, the truth, the, the truth I'm talking about is the truth that I'm talking about is the truth that people are dying. Oh yes, mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's the truth that we're talking about right now. The truth that I people are that we know. The yeah. truth that people are fleeing in fear of their lives. The truth that uh, uh, Abby's and Isai's force are still bombing to grind. That's the truth. That's the truth. And that's what I'm talking about. Absolutely. So I will let you two do a closing statement. What do you want to say about, you know, about the current situation in Tigray? Well, I just want to say that we are here as much as the people or the world, forget about the Ethiopian government or the Ethiopian in general, the world is forgetting about us because they believe uh, our leaders are a, what's the term, um, a rabble. So that makes this, the people become one of them too. Is Tigrayan considered as a rabble? So it's okay for them to be killed? Is the world actually um, deciding for us to be killed because we don't have a representative? That's my question. I would love the world to tell me that the people who die in Tigrayan only, in Tigrayan, if they're not a part of this society, if they're not a part of this world, if the United Nation does not have responsibility only for Tigrayan, I would like to know because my people are dying. There are people dying on the streets, that whether they are going from uh, Humora all the way from Tigray to Humora and then to get to Sudan, or they are dying in Sudan. But at least the one that dying in Sudan will be reported because they will document it that they are refugee. And if they die, they will say this many died. But the one in Tigray, nobody knows who they are. The one who died in Mahadra, probably you won't find their body because it has been 20, uh, is it 25 days? According to our prime minister, it says the war ended. It has been 25 days. How many Tagaru do you think you're gonna find in Mahadra? So we are here to make voices to our people that we're getting calls from our family. We're getting calls from our people, whether they're getting, uh, they, they're getting called, uh, the Tigrayan media house is getting a call saying, help us, we hear. But the world is not listening because we are only 6 million and we have nothing to offer to the world. That's the reason the world is not listening to us. 
The world is not trying to investigate what's another 6 million people have been to die a part of the small region in Tigray. So it's not just our prime minister is the one that, uh, what's the word? If gave up on us that decided to send a genocide and kill us, just the world is watching because the world is asking the government that actually sending genocide to our world is asking them, what is it happening in Tigray? Oh, madam, I'm actually killing the Tigrayan people. Is that what they expect? Nobody is going to tell you the truth, like the ground itself that's going to tell you. Go to Tigray. If you don't find any building damaged from, from uh, bombing, from rockets, from whatever it is that it won't be through guns, if you don't find any Tigrayan die, I'll be the first person to admit I was wrong. But you know for a fact, if you ever even entered an inch of Tigrayan land, you will find massive, massive, massive bl blood and bodies of Ethiopian. Not just Tigrayan, but Ethiopian. Not just Ethiopian, Eletrian possibility of Somali. So listen to us. And UAE too, some UAE forces. No, 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 they no. They will no, find no. a body. They will not find a body. That is they will not find a body. Support. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's more yeah. like technological support. Yeah, so, drones. Yes, yeah. they will not find. Yeah, yeah, they will find a drone. Abi, Abi, right, and being uh, used from from uh, Addis Ababa. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you won't find anybody's body except Electrian, and which is they look like us. So obviously they're gonna consider them like the guy. And nobody cares because these people don't even have an ID from Eletria to say ID Eletrian because they're using uh, uh, Ethiopian uniform. That's the sad part. I wish they were declaring a war against us and we'll be fine if we were declaring a war that Eletrian are coming to kill us. I I'm sorry, Eletrian uh, uh, government, which is uh, <laughs> Yehidef, whatever that. Yehidef, yes. But to the leaders, to the people, to the people that are supporting us from Eletria is absolutely amazing. I see in social media, there's no Tigrawai has more social media than Eletrian and they're fighting for us. And my heart goes off to them. My heart goes off to them because they're fighting as Tigrayan speaking, not as Ethiopian, not as Tagaru. They're fighting as Tigrayan speaking. People are dying. We need help. Because Tigrayan, and, the Ethiopian Tigrayan, we did not have social media. We were sleeping because we trust our government. We were sleeping. We weren't ready for this as a social media. If you see every Amhara, every Oromo, they have the social media to tell the world how nothing is going on. Everything is going well. So the world is giving up on Tigray. Tigray is right now depend on the outside world of uh, the Eletrian people that are fighting for a right. And Tigray depends on Tagaru like us to tell the truth. Otherwise, that's where we are. There's nobody from outside countries actually helping Tagaru. There is nobody from inside Ethiopia helping Tagaru, in my opinion. Thank you. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to actually say what I feel like to say. Hi, you're welcome, Sundar. You are welcome at any time. Uh, it was very, uh, uh, very insightful to hear your perspective because your perspective is needed. Uh, you, you know, you've been through, like, you know, I mean, you know a lot of stuff that people don't know. So it's good to, you know, to hear your perspective. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, we're going to go ahead. I just uh, want to say uh, there was uh, one thing I have, um, I heard from uh, like an info that was a, uh, a confirmed info that I didn't know, but um, the Eritrean soldiers, uh, just to, to, I don't know, Sundayo have heard it, but uh, Eritrean soldiers, when they, were, they are being sent to war, they don't know they are actually, they are actually going, they, they, they are being told, one, that they're, uh, they're gonna, uh, the, the Tepelev has lost and the Tepelev is in big trouble and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, uh, we are just decimating to get to, to TPLF, like the Wayani. In their perspective in Eritrea, the propaganda has been so strong. This is what I 
this heard today. Okay, not heard. It's not fake. Actual. Okay, this is a report from Eritrea coming out. Okay, so um, they, they when they are going to attack uh, Ethiopia, they've been told they're being told like the TPLF is going to be not TPLF. We say TPLF, they say Wayani. Okay, the Wayani is a uh, is being is have been have lost. So you guys going to be able to own cars, whatever you want. To go to go back and forth to Ethiopia. Oh, it's going to be open borders. Like we're going to have all these things. That's what the soldiers are being told. When they are coming back, right now there is about twenty thousand uh, um, wounded soldiers, and uh, and they're including Ethiop Ethiopians and Eritrean soldiers in ha in the hospitals of er Asmara, uh, surrounding Asmara, um, and they are coming back from Badem. So there still is the, they are still being told the war is on bottom men. It's about bottom men, and they got injured in bottom men. I don't I don't know how it makes sense because they also have they also helping the Ethiopian soldiers, and throughout Asmara is full of Ethiopian soldiers. Like no question, this is a confirmed. It's not a report that I'm not sure about. Uh, this is a direct from people, and. I don't, it doesn't make sense saying, oh, you're going to defend Badame because they are, the way they are perceiving it is that the war, the war about Badame is with Wayani and not with the Ethiopian people or the Ethiopian government. You see you know, yeah. how they've been told? Propaganda. It's Propaganda. It's so, it's so amazing. So that was today. Uh, but yeah, thank you. And then, you know, we're going to continue trying to at least bring a perspective, uh, you know, we not we might not be educating people. Sometimes you're educating. There are people who might not know uh, much about this conflict. But the this this uh, forum, this um, platform, allows for some to get ideas. You know what is it, and then for others, just a perspective. You know, some who just know so much about it, they just see what perspective other people have. So this is great, and we'll see for the next time. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone who are watching live. Um, Tigray will prevail. Uh, this is just, you know, temporarily. Uh, Tigray has always prevailed any evil forces because they are always on the right path. Tigray didn't go to other region to invade. We were in our location. Evil forces come to us. So once again, Tigray will prevail. And they always lose. Uh, say that again. And they always lose. <laughs> yes, they always lose. They always lose. So, and yeah. again, I, I mean, this is, I, I, they, as they said, as she said, even the tree fights. If there is any tree left in that in that poor state, even the tree and the rock fights, even the mountain fights. And I'm sure I feel so bad for those who are completely sold mm -hmm. that this war is done, and you know, Abi has won. And I feel I, I don't know what they're gonna say when the the whole thing is done. I mean, I oh I yeah, no oh yeah, it's gonna be the whole world's gonna be shocked. So right now, yeah. as we speak, as we speak right now, history is being written. And guess what though, Abby and Issa, you know what they're doing? They're creating heroes, Tigrayan heroes, new heroes. At the cost new of heroes. Like, new yeah, heroes. You know why? Yeah, because yeah, think about it. Life. Think about it. Even in the diaspora, we feel so like you know patriotic. You know. Just think about what they're, they're feeling back home. They're fighting, but think how they're feeling right now. An enemy, an invader is coming to invade us. We will do whatever it takes to defend our people, our region. So continue the fight. We will overcome. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Have a good night. We are also living, in, we're also living in the middle of a pandemic, so please stay safe. Yeah, we'll do. Take care. Love you. All right. Do the same. Bye, but we have one thing that we never had before. What? Bye. Oh. <laughs> what is it? Oh, she doesn't like that. All right. I'll see you soon, guys. I'm going to play this song to end it. Okay. Bye, bro. All right. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>